Welcome to Lecture 19 of Aerospace Propulsion. This is the first of three lectures where we're going to cover engine matching off design. So off design matching is important to understand for several reasons. First, when we actually manufacture the components of our engine, they rarely meet the design specifications exactly. So this results in the engine components operating off design even when the engine is supposed to be at its design point. And there's also a range of power settings for an engine, such as takeoff, climb, cruise, and descent that are needed. And so the engine has to be able to be shown to operate well and safely at all the relevant off-design conditions. We're going to adopt a pretty simple uh, approach to predicting what's going to happen off-design. There's going to be a few assumptions involved, but it will predict the correct trends and allow us to understand the way in which a jet engine behaves um, when you move away from its design point. So the key messages to take away from this lecture are that uh, in today's lecture, we're just going to consider the off-design performance for a simple turbojet. And there's a huge simplification to figuring out the off-design performance if the turbine is choked, and even more so if the propulsive nozzle is also choked. In this case, the turbine nozzle area to propulsive nozzle area ratio uh, completely fixes the turbine operating condition. And then we can use power and pressure balances to yield the compressor operating condition. And the overall engine performance can thus be quantified completely as a function of T0.4 over T0.2. So I mentioned we're going to need to make some simplifying assumptions. Uh, here they are. So um, basically, our inlet stagnation pressure and temperature, the fuel flow rate, and possibly the ambient pressure are going to be the only things that affect engine performance. We'll treat the fuel flow rate um, as the independent variable. And the thrust, the mass flow rate of air, the shaft rotational speed, um, and temperature and pressures throughout the engine as the dependent variables. Before we move on, let's think about some constraints on the engine quantities. So determining the engine operating condition can, uh, you can think of setting this up as a list of constraints. Um, in general, for, so for example, for a multi-shaft engine, um, Try to come up with four constraints that have to be applied. These are related to the rotational speeds, the mass flows, the power, and pressure changes. So take a minute and think about this and try to come up with these four constraints yourself before you move on to the next part of the video. We'll also take this up in the next tutorial.